So in this lesson moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate how to request an instance. I've already uh, talked about how to log into your service now account uh, itself, but here what you need to do is simply navigate to developer.servicenow.com and you'd be able to navigate to this particular page. Now once you're on this page, you'll notice first on the bottom there is the content available for Washington DC, which is the latest release of ServiceNow. And then we have Vancouver and Utah, right? So these are the uh, previous two releases. The latest one is Washington DC. But in any case, let's request an instance by clicking on the request instance button on the top right here. And you will notice a pop-up will come up and it will tell you that the latest release is Washington DC. Now, of course, if you're using Vancouver, Utah, or even previous version, you can upgrade to the latest version or to any of these versions. And I've created a separate section demonstrating the upgrades as well. But for now, let's request and click on Washington DC, which is the latest release, and then click on request. Now, once you do that, it is going to go ahead and process your request. It may only take a few seconds as it shows, but sometimes it takes minutes and sometimes even hours depending on the backlog on the ServiceNow platform. So let's wait in while the ServiceNow platform sets up our instance. All right, great. So once the instance is ready, you are going to see a pop-up that's gonna give you the URL for the instance, which in my case is displayed right here. And more importantly, by the way, make sure you note down the username and then the current password. And once you save the information right here, you can simply click on open instance. And what this is going to do is open up a new tab for you where you'll be able to uh, use your admin and the password to log into your newly created instance by ServiceNow. So let's take a look at and see how we can log in to our instance. This simply is a message saying enable analytics, simply agrees with that and there you go. So now you're logged in to your newly created instance. And what this is going to do is just simply give you some uh, cards here that you can see, pin or unpin your menus to maximize working space, for example, find anything in the platform by using the search bar. And I'm going to demonstrate that as well. So let's click on next and say, got it. Perfect. All right. So once you're logged in, you'll notice on the URL, you'll see your dev instance number and the URL itself on the right you'll see the system administrator and this is by the way just a profile picture you can click on impersonate user and then of course use that information to impersonate the system admin as well which i'm going to demonstrate later in subsequent lectures now once you're logged in if you scroll down you'll notice there's several options that you're able to see for example regarding workflows connect workflows or personalized user experiences you can build business apps as well. All right, so you can navigate to your app engine studio if you need to build code apps, for example, quickly, or you can create code apps from scratch or use templates as well. Once again, that is going to be demonstrated later on as well. But here on the menu bar, if you click on all, you'll be able to take a look at everything that you need to know about where you need to navigate to within the ServiceNow platform. For example, you can click on my profile, or app engine benchmark and each one of these has for example this is self-service which is a drop down arrow and you can then uh, click on any one of these to navigate now what ServiceNow does and continuously does is the fact that it adds on various options right for example in the previous version the menu was not that long not that lengthy okay but now you'll notice many other options for example docker is a new option so if you're into Docker apps or Docker images, or you're using Docker containers, you can click on Docker images and work with those or Docker repos as well, okay? All right, so for example, if I need to find something and I'm looking for, and I cannot find in the menu here, or I'm not sure where it is, I can always click on the search and then click on user, okay? For example, and click on view results. And what this is going to do is take me to that page where I can at least create a new user, take a look at user um, and various options. So the search areas is also uh, very, very handy where you can search for a particular name or whatever you're looking for. Okay, so let's click on 
the home page will take us back to the home and here within the all i can also filter for example if i need to create a new user i can simply click on user and this will give me a list of options where i can take a look at everything that relates to the particular user now under organizations i can click on users for example or under user experience analytics or user certificate mapping and so on so once again it depends on where you want to go what you want to find and how you want to do it for example if i need to under organization click on users this is going to take me to the users page now once i'm here i'm going to be able to see all of the users that are part of the platform i can search of course and if i need to create a new user simply on the top right click on the new button and this is going to take you to a page where you can enter the new user information for example you can give it a user id which is a unique id give it a first name last name title department and also you can use password needs reset for example locked out and other options such as email language calendar and so on and you can click to add a photo for example a photograph of that user as well so i'm not going to do this right now this is fairly straightforward as a homework this is for you okay but let's go back to the list of all the users and for example if i need to pick a certain user here just so we can take a look at for example let's click on abraham lincoln right here and this is going to uh, bring me to the details of this particular user i can update the user i can set a new password or i can delete the user and of course work with any of these fields or add or delete records or change records for example okay now the attachment button right here is this will allow me to for example add attachments for this particular user so i can choose a file from my computer or laptop and add it to this particular or attach it with this particular user for example could be some documents that i like to maintain for this particular user and on the bottom here you'll notice other options such as roles groups this user belongs to for example delegates subscriptions and so on so this gives you a good idea of the basics of the ui which again they continuously change they add some things but the fundamentals stay the same so even if you're using the previous version for example you'll have all these options as you see right here so nothing to worry about just make sure you understand the fundamentals and you follow along on some of the user creation or for example user groups if you need to click on user groups right here it will take you to the user groups again this is a, again the survey creators group okay you can create a new group likewise fairly straightforward all right so this is how you would actually spin up an instance which is the washington dc instance in our case in this example if you're using a previous instance that's perfectly fine no need to worry just i wanted to demonstrate how you can actually use and create and spin up your own instance so that you could practice you can also click on admin for example and you can navigate to admin home and other options as well so if i click on admin home this will take you to the page where you can then manage as the administrator for all of the other options that is within the ServiceNow platform and this is where it says welcome to the admin home which is the system so you can manage monitor and discover all your day-to-day -day administrative actions and tools across the platform so if you're the admin this is where you'll be working on and this gives you a nice shared admin dashboard for example you can change the dashboard to a different dashboard by creating additional dashboards and different cards on this particular dashboard gives you additional information such as the compliance score request items over 24 hours and again you can change and edit this dashboard based on your own requirements so if i click on edit for example this dashboard in the admin center application but global is the current application so in order to edit this dashboard we need to use the application picker to select the current scope so again i'll demonstrate this later on which again is a good idea if you are working regularly on certain specific tasks you could do so okay all right perfect so this is how it is and if you need to add a new element you could do so for example you can add an image filter heading data visualization and whichever option you like to choose okay so let's exit out of the editing mode and on the bottom here get information about your instance so right here the current version is washington dc and of course since it's the latest version there's no upgrade and scheduled or necessary 
Great, so I hope this helps. I just wanted to demonstrate quickly how to navigate with the new UI of the ServiceNow platform and of course the latest release, which is Washington DC. Let me know if you have any questions with this. Let's move to the next lesson.